All right. So, uh, Evan, I'm going to start I'm going to start with you and um, just get. Uh, oh, I think we got Kaim coming in uh, now. But um, um, Evan, yeah, if you want to kind of talk about the, the history of Senor Sisig and kind of where, yeah, where it all began, um, you know, maybe just as an idea, right? Like maybe go back to in that like planning stage. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, go go for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this year, well, last year, 2020 was our 10 year anniversary. Huh. Uh, hence, we started in 2010. Um, and yeah, I mean, it started off with an idea, you know, probably around 08 of just, you know, me wanting to do a food truck. I was seeing a bunch of food trucks in San Francisco that were just doing kind of like taco trucks and, you know, they had the, Stanley steamers downtown and just it was kind of what you were used to historically to kind of see in San Francisco but you know around that time I was traveling a lot and I saw you know all all sorts of different types of street food in these other cities and was really just wondering why San Francisco didn't have that as part of our food scene it kind of uh, boggled me because I was like you know we have so much you know different types of cultural foods in San Francisco and the Bay Area, it's kind of like a melting pot for, for culinary. And, um, but just to not see that same kind of level of street food diversity was something that was kind of eye-opening and I saw it more as an opportunity. Um, and so we start, I started really just kind of like think of like, what else could we do in a food truck? Um, and around 09 uh, is when I, I, I saw another truck in LA doing these Korean tacos. It was Kogi tacos or Kogi Korean. And uh, that's when I, it really just hit me like, oh man, we, we could do something like that in the Bay, mm -hmm. um, but do it with Filipino, uh, you know, and fusion, right? And so, you know, it was at that moment I hit up Gil because Gil's been a long time friend of mine and he was doing culinary and I was more kind of business orientated. So I was like, you know, we can come together and we could do this, do something really cool. So I brought the idea and, you know, Gil was like, man, CC tacos, that would be, that would be bomb. I got this recipe. And so I was like, man, let's try it. Sure. And um, I mean, it, it, you know, we had a bunch of ideas, but once he made the CC tacos, I think it was just like, we stopped, we, we just, that's it, you know? And we just kind of started building around that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, uh, that's kind of the short and skinny of how we got started. Um, and, you know, we, we ended up buying a food truck and, and hit the road. Hmm. So um, let me ask uh, Gil, um, how, well, yeah, what brought you into cooking? Uh, was this something that was like tradition in the family? Was it uh, something that, you know, t was always um, kind of inside you or did you pick it up later on in life? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it was all of the above. Um, just just growing up around my family, they had restaurants and, you know, my family is really into cooking. My dad has a, a large cooking background um, and decided to get into culinary school after a couple of years of high school and just, you know, figuring it out. I actually, right after high school, I went to a computer technology school um, just to hop on that, you know, tech wave just to you know, knowing that it was booming at the time, and of course you want to make money, but that wasn't really my passion. You know, my passion after going to school for um, a couple of years uh, and computer technology, thinking about what I really want to do is, is cooking. Mm -hmm. I always had that itch for cooking. I always had that kind of deep inside of me. And I knew um, deep down inside, you know, this is this is the right way to do it is, is you know, um, I made myself to culinary school and, and kind of go in, into culinary school wanting to do something like this and again I was a little bit older than and some of the students that were in there so I took it more seriously um, and with a, already having a cooking background just minor cooking at home or you know cooking for my friends I felt like I had an advantage and I just wanted to you know not only get that certificate but also you know develop more skills so after a couple of years you know two-year program in the culinary um, California Culinary Institute in San Francisco, um, you know, um, hop right into to restaurants and, and hotels and did that for about, you know, five to six years. And at the tail end, Evan approached me and then just, you know, gave me the idea and 
And, you know, definitely ever since then, and that was like, you know, 2009, um, you know, 10 years, almost 11 years later, here we are with like six food trucks and, and a restaurant and two restaurants, sorry, as of today. Yeah, uh, con congratulations to you both on opening um, another location in Oakland. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's incredible, right? Like that yeah. is, <laughs> to say the least. And I'll make sure that I'll highlight that. What is it that uh, about you two that was like um, complimentary, right? Because it's not easy to go into business with someone else, right? And work having that type of relationship, not just a friendship, right? Because friendship could absolutely um, uh, be helpful and it could be difficult, right? Like I've worked with friends before and people's working styles are different than just the way you approach a friendship. So yeah, to, to either one of you, Evan or Gil, like what was it that like made y'all like mesh? Yeah, I, I think for for us, I mean, first and foremost, we were doing we we talked about what our roles were within the business, right? We we weren't going to kind of have crossover duties, right? Like we knew the, that Gil was going to be more the culinary side, I would be the more business side, and of course, things would kind of mold in what they need to be. Um, but you know, before all that, you just don't go into business with anybody you know, um, especially your friends. Um, and, and it's a dangerous thing to do. You know, you could, you could ruin a relationship. Um, but I think we could all say we, we would, we, if we look at all our friends, there's, there's actually most of them, you'd probably be like, I'd never go into business with them, <laughs> you know? Um, but, but, you know, with Gil, it was different, you know? Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very calculated. And so like, before I even called him and, uh, you know, gave, him the, pro the, the the proposition of of doing this yeah. you know i i was i put a lot of thought into it about like who the individual is right like and um i would have never called him if, if i didn't feel like he was going to be a good partner um, you know i grew up with an, my dad was an entrepreneur and he went into some partnerships and he drilled it in my head that never to do a partnership just don't ever do it it's just like, it's like the worst thing and um you know we, you know, and, and that prevented me from doing anything ever with anybody else. And, and, and not until senior CSIG did I have to kind of break that barrier and, and, and trust, trust, but it's not, it's not just trust. It's, it's really kind of looking at the individual that, that you're going into business with. Right. Um, and so, you know, I knew, knew Gil was loyal. He was passionate. He was, he, you know, he would always stick to, to, to what he does and he wouldn't, it's, he's not that type of individual that would just, you know, every, every month is a new idea. You know, it, it's, he, he sticks to it and he'll see it through. Um, and I saw that, you know, when it came to his relationships with the way he treats his family and all the things. And so I, I knew he would be a good business partner. The other thing that we did too in the beginning was really just talk it out. You know, what are our roles? You know, uh, how are we going to get this started? What are we doing? Who makes the decisions? How do we make decisions? All the way to, hey, if it fails, how do we fail? How do we get out of this? And, um, you know, so we, we really made that clear from the start. And, you know, I look back at, you know, my father's, you know, partnerships. And I think that's the one thing that he might have missed was really setting it up in the beginning for everything. Not just like, hey, how are we going to open? You know, how are we going to open and operate and close if we have to? Right. And um, so, you know, <clears throat> you know, my dad set, set, gave me the path, but maybe he made a few mistakes <laughs> along the way that I learned from as well. And I picked that up and, you know, so, you know, that's really how we kind of were able to, to, to trust each other when it came to, to going into business to, with each other. Cause it is, it's like a marriage. It's like a relationship. Um, you really have to be dedicated and loyal to each other through, through thick and thin. And um, there's going to be ups and downs of course, but uh, that, you know, that, that's, that's how it really all started. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gil, with, uh, do you have similar kind of similar feelings? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, as Evan was saying about, you know, planning everything, I think that just kind of simplified everything for me of what was going to be going on. You know, for me, I'm not a risk taker. I'm very, you know, zoned in. I'm, you know, I got a plan for my career if, it, if, it's, if it's something I need to do. And, and he pulled me aside. And usually I'm not that type of person who, who will kind of like drop everything that I definitely um, – you know, came together these six years of my cooking career and say like, hey, I want to do something else and, and, and take a chance, definitely. So uh, again, the, the thought process and me trusting Evan 
I think I, I really took that chance. I took that leap of faith and be like, you know what? You know, he put some good points in my head and saying like, you know, you know, don't you want to, don't you want to control your future? Don't you want to be your own boss? Of course, it's like, you know, of course I do. You know, on the other side, I, I got colleagues and people telling me saying you're making the wrong choice and, and this is not what you want to do. But I had that gut feeling that I think this is a good, a good, good choice for me and a good route for me to take. Um, and it might not be reasonable, but it, it is a chance and I would not know until I, you know, succeed or fail. Um, so all the points that Evan, you know, mentioned about, you know, trust and, and communication and, and us continuing to understand what our places are of, of even our duties in the business really says a lot in going into the business in general, either you're you know, you're, you're running business by yourself or you're talking to one of your, your colleagues or your, your, your right-hand man or right-hand woman and, and understanding, hey, this is what you have to do and this is what I expect for you. And if there's no, you know, if there's no, if there's any unclarity, you know, let's, let's talk about it because we're not going to wait until we fail and say, hey, I forgot to mention that back in the day when we, we did open that, you know, I, I was kind of uncertain about that. So, Again, communication, you can, you can never do too much communication. Of course, it might be uneasy or, or kind of um, uncomfortable. You know, we haven't had much of that, you know, but I, I think it's just our relationship from even, you know, being in high school together or even at, outside of high school, having a relationship outside of the business, that's what's important because you kind of got to put two, two things, you know, kind of separate and kind of know when you're at work you're at work and you know things are not going to affect you personally until you know you're you're outside of work so it is, it is a lot to commit to and and i'm thankful we're at this point right now yeah i'm i'm, um, I'm happy that you all really talk about the relationship and the um the the preparation that it takes right it's not about just hopping in but it is developing this this new type of relationship right like a, essentially like a hybrid where it's we are business partners but we also want to maintain our friendship um mm -hmm. that's extremely that's extremely difficult and um i i think that that i um yeah one to see your success i think is is linked to that relationship right like without mm -hmm. that then i you know even with your business background evan and your culinary background if those two things can't intersect um, and and you're able to talk about those difficult things, right? Talk about failing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you are now. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to answer that same question over to uh, Kat and Kaim, right? Because you two also have had to navigate a partnership, right? And, and you guys have been together for a long time, right? I think this is something that's really cool about um, all four of you, right? You had an extended relationship and you've seen success. Um, and, and that's, that's really what kind of popped out when I was, um, kind of thinking about this. I was like, man, y'all have been really successful in, um, in a partnership. And, um, and that's really important to me. Um, so yeah, um, Kat and, uh, welcome Kaim. Um, and yeah, talk, yeah, talk to, I guess, yeah, talk about um, the City Eats and, and then you can kind of go into this partnership and how it started and, um, yeah, what's, what's, what's made it easy to be um, successful? Or maybe not easy, but how have you been successful? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not easy, but, yeah. Um, yeah, how have you guys been successful in your partnership? And kind of, do you want me to take like what the cities and then you'll take about the partnership with senior cc yeah yeah yep. okay perfect um so i've been just with the organization since 2016 so they've been around since 2014 and so um you know the city eats has has been we've evolved since covid right we're not you know when we first when they first started they were just making sandwiches brown bag lunches handing them out on the streets of san francisco and oakland and we've you know we've had other cities like la detroit i've done the philippines mm. and so fast forward to 2016 when i joined the organization um I had a very short-term relationship with Kaim. I only knew him as a videographer for all of my events um, mm -hmm. with my daughter, modeling, um, the club scene, things like that. And so I joined the organization um, 
because I believed in his passion and what he wanted to do. And I also had lived in San Francisco all majority of my life and seen homelessness evolve and, and increase throughout the years. And so, you know, when I joined the City Eats, their bag, their, you know, brown bag lunches, we've had from anywhere from 10 volunteers and we've evolved every single month. We've brought in a lot of new people, a lot of different, you know, corporations, high schools, colleges wanting to get involved because we be he, everyone believed in what, you know, what Kaim had envisioned. And so with COVID um, 2020, we've evolved from sandwiches to hot meals. And so with that being said, you know, we've sourced, we've spoken to a lot of homeless people out on the streets, even families or individuals that reached out to us and, you know, we're like, okay, what can we do to provide you with food resources? And they're like, well, we're really tired of sandwiches because every organization with COVID, that's all they were giving out were sandwiches because it was the easiest thing to make, pre-made, done deal, send it out. They actually really requested for hot meals. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, okay, great. how are we going to evolve from sandwiches to hot meals? Mm -hmm. And so that when, that's when our partnership with Senior Seasteak has grown because we do have an annual night feed with them okay. since I think the beginning, right? Since 2014, possibly even before my time. So they are a, a integral part of our night feed in December. And so they provide the meals there. But with COVID, we really needed to expand and provide other resources. And so Evan and Kaim um, connected and I'll have Kaim take it from there. I think uh, Elena connect all of us actually, um, just to be on the, <laughs> on the right note. Um, yeah, man, like um, my vision from, um, when we first started, because I was a videographer and everything, and I and I moved to San Francisco from from um, Riverside, born in LA. So I saw the whole skid row. My dad used to take us out all the time um, and see that. And I was and I was like five or eight when that happened too, as well. And that always was embedded in my mind to to always give back. I wanted to do something with kids, um, but you know, seeing families and children on the street that that put me into a space where I was just like, you know what? Let me go this way with my uh, with my vision, and so uh, City East was started. I used all my money, like I would save up some of my money from the club scenes and whatever side business I had or where I was working at, and then I used my money to do that, you know. And um, now we're here, you know. So, um, like Kat said, we moved from doing sandwiches to just doing hot meals and working with a good brother like Evan and G. Um, with their senior six sig and other businesses too as well like spice tribe and stuff like that too as well so everything is evolving around what we're doing now which is in the COVID area and you know for me um i was still going out videoing and stuff like that through the COVID. for some reason a lot of people were like hitting me up for commercials and stuff saying hey i want to do a COVID commercial but when i was out there i was like man there's a lot of people out here now so we have to kick in, you know, so um, that's when I hit my brothers up, man. I said, yo, let's do something, you know, so, and that's why we're here right now, man. So it's been a good, been a, it's been a good journey of 2020, I ain't gonna lie. Yep. A lot of people wasn't working, but we were continuously doing things, raising money, doing fundraisers, and it's been, it's been a good um, run. Yeah. And so that's where like a CSIG for the people evolved. Um, Evan and Kaim and Gil, you know, put their great minds together and wanted to do this whole campaign, CSIG for the people. Um, Evan and Gil, they, you know, they um, provided meals for the frontline workers at the hospitals, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And then we also, um, they also provided meals for not only people living on the streets facing homelessness, but also families, you know, we, um, Gil and Evan and Kaim have great relationships with the community at large here in San Francisco. So different partnerships, um, and that's how our partnership has grown and evolved from just not our night feed, but also going forward. And today um, it's, you know, CSIG for the people. And I think today, as of today, or as of the last posting, we, what, how much did we raise Evan? I think we're like 60K, 60K, you know, somewhere around there, you know. And yeah, 60K and we, you know, we've fed or we, they've delivered or we've delivered over what, 10,000 individual something meals, like something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
and it keeps growing. The requests is real and the partnership is, it grows stronger and stronger. And not only just us, you know, the city eats and senior CSIG, but there's other community, you know, influencers that reach out to us to see, Hey, how we need help. We need resources. Um, Honestly, like COVID test site, the volunteers that work there, they don't get fed. So, you know, people reach out to us to help them feed the volunteers that are doing the COVID testing, things like that. So it's just not only homelessness. It's not only people that are facing food insecurities, but it's also frontline workers and volunteers um, that are helping, you know, you know, flatline COVID throughout the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, I've heard uh, Kaim and I've heard Evan, uh, actually all of you um, have mentioned a, a relative or someone who was really influential in, in your path um, to where you are now. And um, I, yeah, it's fascinating to me. I mean, it's kind of similar to um, uh, Kaim and, and Evan when you were talking about your fathers. My, my dad um, was an entrepreneur and I grew up here in San Francisco. And he made like, he, like, I grew up in a mission district, so homeless, homelessness was everywhere. Uh, but yeah, he walked me down to the TL and be like, look, this is, this is a real thing, right? And, and you can't avoid this. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's always been, it's, it's interesting how you have those family members uh, that get you early, right? And, and I see that across people who continue to do um, you know, s direct service, right? Who are out there like working and trying to support people. Um, and so I, I want to go back to this idea of collaboration because I think that it can be difficult to, to we already uh, assessed it. It's hard to, to trust people. It can be really hard. And the more I, I, I'm split, I think that there's sometimes where we live in a culture where there is a lot of me, 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 I, I, I. Right. Like I got to do this. If I don't do it, then, you know, um, but there's so many, I mean, I, I'm fortunate enough to be around people like yourself who promote collaboration, right. Who, who really see the importance of connecting with so many different people. So this goes out to anyone who wants to answer. Um, yeah. What, what has, um, yeah. When, when did you realize that collaboration was, was necessary? Right, as a part of developing, um, you know, again, either um, City Eats or um, Senior Sisig or, or anything else in, um, in your pathway, your journey to where you are now. Um, I'm gonna say one, um, a quick one, which, this, which was uh, Christmas Eve when we did our, um, what, what was it, Christmas or when we did our um, give back for the toys and stuff. And we normally only do, 2300 i guess um this time because we collab with everybody you know so like that's my thing it's like i want to show because i'm from the la area right and black and brown don't get along right so my thing was like you know what i'm gonna collab with anybody you know what i'm saying that's that's willing to do the same work that i put into as well and i collab with the or we collab with the all nsf um and other organizations too as well that helped us out and we was able to do over 10,000 toys. We would never be able to do that ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we put on a whole parade for the kids and all that stuff like that. And that's like one of the, the biggest accomplishments that we, that I feel that we have right there is just showing that we all together, you know what I'm saying? All in one and doing things. And, you know, Senior 682 as well. Like we, we fed so many people and stuff and nobody cannot do this on their own, man. Like nobody can do it on their own. I don't care who you are, you have to collab and you have to collab with the right people. Yeah. And it, and you know, it, and this resonates with me all the time. It takes a village, right? It takes a village to help one another and to raise a family. And so I think our collaboration with Senior CSIG um, has strengthened, right? Because we use each other as resources, right? Like, you know, you know, a family needs food, a certain week we call, you know, senior CSIG, we have other resources, other partnerships, other, you know, community organizations reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And so we are a mighty small team of the city eats, um, but we become this greater resource and this greater team once we build and foster these relationships with like senior CSIG, all NSF, you know, 
and those relationships are long lasting. So, you know, Evan and Kaim have historically, you guys, you know, they, they know each other from a mutual friend, but not only from there, their relationship has evolved, right? You know, with G and Evan and Kaim, they're really strong leaders in our community. Um, and so with me, I'm, as you can tell, I'm like the only female here. Um, <laughs> I'm usually at the back end. And when I see these, you know, influencers continue to make a difference in the world. And it's not just an I, 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 me, me, me. It's all of us together brings in more harmony and it makes the, makes the work easier, actually. You know, we all have one vision. We all want to support people that are facing, you know, food insecurities, especially during this time of COVID. Um, and we'll also want to be a resource to one another and continue to foster relationships. And once we, you know, show individuals and youth that we are it, it can be done black and brown um any race any color shape size um definitely gives everyone that sense of like everyone can work together it just takes you know understanding like gil said communication um and defining you know our roles and responsibilities throughout the entire process cat is usually on the front end she's lying <laughs> <laughs> i'm always in the back i'm always in the back end <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I picked that up. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really happy that you mentioned this idea of uh, different people, black, brown, whatever, being able to come together. And that's highly significant right now, right? We're seeing that. We're in a really uh, divisive time in the country. Um, and um, I think it can be hard for a lot of folks to um, focus in on the folks uh, on on people that are doing great work, right? You can really you can get um, bombarded with negativity. You can if you can if you if you're just going through your feed or you're going through the news, you would think that the world is just it's over, right? And it's easy to sink into that. And it's extremely easy to sink into that, um, which is why I try to like you know through this podcast, I try to highlight people that are doing great work and and that need that need more and more exposure there's never enough exposure to uh to the positives right and um yeah so uh i, I love that y'all were um yeah yeah that y'all are so passionate and it's apparent that you're really passionate about collaboration like the first time i met cat we talked i mean we talked maybe for like a minute right but it was already it was established like oh you know like that's great. So what are you doing? Like I asked her a couple of questions and about, you know, what, what else they need? Like, what did you need or what, what could you use some support with? Uh, Cause that's what I want to do. How can I help this? How can I help this movement? Um, and when uh, I found out about the partnership between um, the city Eats and senior Sissick, I was like, Oh man, like that is a staple. I mean, I I'm sure Gil and Evan know it, but like y'all are a staple. Um, in San Francisco in the Bay Area. And so it's it's dope to hear that y'all have expanded to Oakland because that's only going to continue, right? And it's, it's um, uh, I, and not to say that City Eats is not, right? Because I've known about, like, Kaim, this is the second time we've been, we've been on the call, but I knew about the City Eats for years, right? Um, and so, yeah, it's not by chance that y'all came together, right? It's like, man, these are people, <laughs> people of similar energies, right? Who, who have, um, who have put in the work, right? Who have really put in some work to, to, to help people out. Um, so in doing this kind of work, you can get, I, I, I know firsthand that doing this work to support people can also um, be overwhelming, right? And you can forget Oh, I think you can forget how to have fun, right? You can forget how to just like, oh man, like sit in, sit in a moment and be like, yo, we're doing dope work. Like we're doing great work right now. Like, uh, as opposed to just, we got to go, we got to go, we got to do another meal. We got to open another restaurant. Uh, uh, City Eats, how do we expand? How do we get more toys? You know what I mean? So how are, again, open to anyone. How do you remind yourself to have fun in this process, to like enjoy the process of, of expansion? Uh, I can take this one first, I guess. Um, I mean, just, just like what you said, um, you know, when you're in the fire, when you're like making 300 meals, 400 meals, 
you know, it, it takes it takes an army or it takes, you know, a good team to do it. But you don't realize what you're doing until you're done with those meals or you get to sit down. Like, like, like I'm literally sitting down right now and – sorry. I'm, I'm literally sitting down right now and just thinking about, like, damn, we just opened in Oakland. You know, and, and you know, things like this of – all of how we could all get together and talk about this and you know Evan and I do a lot of like um just just interviews and and just talking about it and you don't it doesn't sink, sink in until that time hits and that time when people kind of ask you you know how do you feel or you know you know it must be nice like you know trying to open another location and you don't realize these things until people ask you and it, you know we're super blessed super thankful and we get to sit down and, and kind of think about it you know, most of the time your mind's running 100 miles an hour and, and trying to figure things out and trying to make the best out of it. But, you know, and, and it's good to like literally sit down and kind of soak it in and be humble. And I think that's a, the biggest thing is to be humble and that, that, and to be humble and not to be, you know, not to be content on what you're doing right now and keep on pushing for, for whatever is next um, in the future. You know, it, you know, you always look back and, and see your accomplishments, but you know, you always say like, you know, we're not done here. And I think Evan and I always talk about how we keep on pushing and, and, and not to look back. But sometimes you, you kind of want to kind of look back and, and soak, things, soak things up and then kind of say like, you know, we're doing all right right now. But, you know, let's not stop here. But we're, we're super, th super thankful and blessed to be where we're at right now. Sure, sure. Evan, do you have any anything? In yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I agree one hundred percent with that. You know, I think you know on the same sentence of being humble. You know, I, I could I could say this for all of us in this room because I know all of us that we don't do this for the accolades. You know, that we don't do this for people to, you know, hold us up and say, oh, what a great person you are, or you know, how successful are you? We, we, that's not that's not what you know. Because if we if you were looking for that, then that's when you that's when it gets overwhelming when you're in the, in the fire and you're starting to, you're like, Oh, what am I doing this for? No, we do this because we know what we're doing. We do, we, do, we, we're happy with what we're doing. And, and that's what makes it easier for us to do, you know? Um, and then it comes back to then, then, then doing it as a, a in, in unity, you know, and, and that, that we can't do this together. We can't do this together. We're all supporting each other. There's no way I can get, you know, this food to all the people I want to get it to when I'm driving by or I'm seeing families that need food without, you know, my partners and my family, you know, I can't do it by myself, you know? And so like, you know, we know that, that we all have our roles, we all play our position, you know, and, 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 you know, that, that for me, at least it, it takes some of that overwhelming feeling away from it. You know, I, I, I know that I have support, you know, we all, we, we, we've connected those dots and we have, we have a good thing going here. Um, and, and, and it's, and the end result is proven, you know, we get to go out there and we get to see the smiles on people's faces. You know, that's the reward, you know, it's, it's, it's not somebody saying, Hey, what a great job you did. It's, 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 it's really the end result of what we're, what we're trying to do. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it's interesting. I was having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine who just recently graduated from you know, Ivy League business school, uh, who's kind of going through this transition right now of like, you know, w looking at um, evaluating what, um, what their values are. And how did that, what did that experience in this very kind of elite business school, how did that align? Or how did that support um, coming out? It's like, yeah, I don't want to go work the corporate job that's supposed to make me happy, right? Even though she's uh, looking at other people that she graduated with that still had that mindset of like, Oh, I have to go do this. I have to go work in this corporate setting, which is, there's nothing wrong with it by any means. Um, but it, when it's not um, aligning with your value system, when it's not, when you're not able to go smile at the end of the day, because you see it's affected someone directly. Right. I think that's only, you can only do that for so long before it eats away at you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had the unique opportunity with with Love Lab to um, facilitate uh, a group therapy um, for employees of color at a software company and also people struggling with isolation during um, during COVID, right? And it is, I mean, it's so uh, apparent in these conversations, right? That some people, that there's the, that the work, sometimes is just not fulfilling, right? 
and those those conversations are extremely difficult right um it's been a it's been a real pleasure to to not only um listen but participate in this um in this kind of um service but uh, the more i hear you all talk about this passion right it's directly from people right it's not like a product and and i don't yeah i don't know how you replace i don't know how you replace those things right <laughs> And I think you just said it, it's the passion. I think we all have the passion to do good work, to provide um, people with the resources they need, to see the smiles at the end of, you know, at the other end, right? When someone receiving a meal or someone, you know, Oakland, I know people are going to be like, oh my gosh, they're in Oakland, they're in Oakland. Senior CC, like people are like, oh my gosh, they're there. Yeah. And like you said, Senior CC is a staple now here in San Francisco, right? You know, everyone knows who they are. And so I think all of us have the same passion. And at the end, what makes it um, worthwhile is because we have so many great people that we work with and so many people that continue to support what we do either at the restaurant either at one of our um, the city eats events it's that it's that drive that continues to helps us going it's right it's the smile at every burrito right <laughs> or every meal that we hand to a family and that's what it is yeah, Kat, you talked about going um, and doing some work with the Philippines. Um, can you talk a little bit more about, you know, what brought you to um, explore um, support services abroad? Yeah, so um, I think in 20, I joined 2016, probably in 2017, I um, stumbled across an organization called um, Project Pearls. And so I've always wanted to give back in the Philippines. My family, of course, they're from the Philippines. My mom used to send money and balik buy in boxes uh, to the Philippines. And so um, when she got ill, she didn't do as much give back as, as she usually did. And um, I was like, well, I want to give back somehow, right? So I connected with this organization. I did my research because, you know, a lot of third world organ nonprofit organizations, they're not legit, right? There isn't really a solid historical support that's out there. So I did my history, I did my homework, I found this organization and I asked questions. I found out who the board were, things like that. And so I said, okay, I need to go to the Philippines. So the first year we just raised money to adopt families. So basically it was $20, 20 US dollars adopted anywhere from 50 to 100 families for Christmas Eve, providing them a meal and toys for their children, right? Fast forward 2018, I was like, okay, Kaim, I'm going to the Philippines. I want to go to the Philippines. I really want to get involved with this organization. I want to see their facility. I want to see how bad it really is in the Philippines because I personally did not know how bad it was. Mm -hmm. So 2018, we did the same thing. We raised money to adopt families in the Philippines. And then we also raised money to um, help me go to the Philippines. Okay. So I went, I went to the Philippines and I literally was there firsthand with the organization. I was there from December 22nd to December 31st. Um, and I literally was there firsthand, saw these kids on the streets um, in the Philippines, you know, recycling plastic, um, pe kids living in the slums, you know, getting, go going through the garbage mm -hmm. and, and giving it to their families. And what they used to do is they would collect all the leftovers from the trash and they would put it in a boiling pot. And so they would boil the food at extreme heat. So it'll kill all the different bacteria and they would eat it as a family. And these families already lived in the slums of the Philippines. Like they lived in these areas where trash was, basically they were dump sites. And so I went over there to make sure that, you know, this, this is legit, this is really happening in the Philippines. And no one has ever told me about it. Um, and to be honest, when I got dropped off at that area, my uncle was like, I'm not dropping you off here. It's not safe here. Why are you, why do you want to go here? It's not safe. And I was like, I'll be okay. And so, you know, when we were there, thousands and thousands of kids, we went to three provinces. We went to the Philippines, oh, we went to Manila, Tondo, um, we went to Bulacan, and then another location, oh, Turlock. 
And so I went to those locations and you could not believe all the smiling faces of the kids, all the meals, meal packs we sent to the, um, for the families, right? And these families are not just like three people, four people, they're like families of six, eight, sometimes 10. And so, you know, doing that outreach really meant something to me. And it also hit you know, it also resonated like this is why my mom was sending boxes and money to the Philippines because our families, 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 friends, friends, you know, they were struggling. And so and anything, any little amount of money or food or any gifts that we sent over um, really did touch their heart. You see all these kids laughing and, and, you know, and very appreciative of everything that they give that we had to offer them that day. All those days that I was there, I was interacting with different kids, helping them with their toys, getting them groceries, things like that. So it was just amazing to be a part of that. And so we want to continue to do that um, every year, actually. We were supposed to go last year, but due to COVID, we didn't make it. Sure. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's a I mean, we talk about expanding and I mean, that is the definition of expanding, um, right? Getting out of our local community, getting out of the state, getting out of the country, right? Um, uh, and so I, I know that, you know, we're, uh, I don't want to keep, uh, I don't want to keep everybody on too long. I know folks got to go to work, but I do want to um, give you all a chance to talk about anything coming up, um, what you're excited about, um, um, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, Kaim, you want to start with uh, anything or any, yeah, anything you're excited about coming up? And go for it. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm very excited about, about where we're going now in 2021. I'm excited for getting over 2020, actually. You know, um, it, was, it was a big change of, um, in the organization, and I'm glad that we got over it. And, and we built a lot of um, – partnerships and everything and I'm, I'm just glad that we're here man like we have an event that's coming up uh february um i don't know the day cap what's the day <laughs> uh, <laughs> i like know february 6th um the first saturday of yeah, february, february. Yeah. our big volunteer and uh valentine's and rose distribution yeah i knew that um but uh yeah just just that's the next event we have coming up and yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm glad we made it through 2020, man. All right. Um, Gil, what, what, uh, what, can you go next? Um, yeah, I'm just definitely, you know, getting over this 2020, but, you know, this new year coming up, open in Oakland, um, you know, just definitely, you know, going to see what the new opportunities are for us this year. I'm, I'm thankful for us to have all these connections with City Heats and, you know, all the organizations we've been working with this past year and going on to this year knowing that you you know you have more people to call when you when you need something you know either done or or working with new projects so just just more connections and and i think we'll have all these people um you know surrounding us just just being on the same page trying to do their um, diligence and and doing life for either the community or you know for for their company um for whatever it is going to this new year just looking at everything out of a positive note. Uh, Evan? Yeah, let me unmute myself there. But yeah, no, I think um, I agree with all that. Uh, 2020 kind of caught us all with a blindside punch real quick, and we had to kind of adjust and get back into the fight. And so, you know, I, I really think what we're doing and what we're all doing here on this call right now is just getting started. Honestly, you know, I mean, we were able to kind of, you know, take that storm and reorganize and start to kind of build. Um, and we we did a lot of good last year. We did a lot, a lot of good. But I think this year we're going to multiply that and that, that's just going to keep going, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited, you know, just kind of where we're going with this into this next year because, you know, all the pieces, all the dots are be, being connected and, you know, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of big things on the way. So. Excited. Cool. Kat, what about you? You got anything you're, you're uh, really excited about? Or? 
Um, 2021, I'm excited to move forward, leave everything behind and continue to evolve with um, our organization, um, expand our partnership with Senior CSIG, build a partnership with you at Love Lab and definitely, um, like Evan said, connecting all the dots and aligning with all these different um, people out in the community and making a village of like-minded individuals and giving back to those that need us the most so yeah i'm excited for that yeah same i think i've um you know i've almost grown tired of reflecting because i've done a whole lot of <laughs> reflecting over the past you know what i mean months um you know i finished uh, i got one more semester left in school so that's the thing i'm really most excited about and uh finishing that last semester um but i um yeah i'm I was ready to like look forward, right? I, and I'd, I'd spent some, I spent intentional time reflecting on the past year because I think that's really difficult to do, especially right now where we're, we can be, again, overwhelmed with like, oh, what's next? What are we going to do, right? And specifically if we're talking about a business, right? In business, it's, you know, it, it's just hard. It, it can be really hard to set that time away um, in your, you know, in your day or your week, um, whatever it may be. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited for the one. I'm excited for continued opportunities like this, right? Like I'm, I'm very, in, in the most authentic way, I'm very grateful for being able to share this, this time with y'all and, and talk about the work that you're doing. Um, this has been, um, doing podcasts like this has been highly therapeutic for me, right? Because I'm like, oh man, like, we can't really have these open conversations without masks on when we're out in the street and we don't necessarily have, um, maybe we don't necessarily have the time um, outside of our, like our families and, um, and, uh, and coworkers. Um, so yeah, I'm really, um, I'm really excited about the, the potential of, um, of partnerships for, for sure with, uh, with um, all, all four of you um, and senior sis again and city eats. Um, so I'm gonna do one last question. Uh, I've been doing a relatively good job of asking all my um, all of my guests on the podcast. Uh, uh, this, um, what is something you're in love with right now? That could be a person that could be a thing, a process, whatever. Um, I'll give you guys a, a, a couple seconds to think about it. Again, the question is something that you're in love with. Kids. <laughs> I answer that real quick. <laughs> what about your kids? What about what about the kids that that is just? No, I, my thing is to make sure that um that they see what I'm doing here, you know, and have them come out to the uh, city eats and and see Senior Six Eight, watch the business, how things run, mm -hmm. um, learn how to edit. Um, they get everything, and everything that I've done, they learn. You know what I'm saying? So, um that's what I'm in love with because that's my future, you know, and I need to get my money back. So I want to make sure that <laughs> I want to make sure that I get my money back. So yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> I'll piggyback off that. It's, it's, it's the kids. It's the kids for me too. Um, I mean, I love a lot of things, but I don't love anything more than my daughter. She's seven years old. Oh, she just turned eight actually two days ago. Um, and it's just, you know, I'm in love with the growth, you know, it's just the growth that day to day, just seeing the new things that she, she's becoming and the wonderful woman she's becoming. And it's just, it's just, it's pretty crazy, but it's, it's the only thing that, I mean, it was it's not the only thing, but it's, it's the thing that warms my heart the most. And so that's what I'm in love with. Wonderful. Um, I'm gonna piggyback on that, but I'm gonna say family. Um, of course, I love my kids, you know, you know, what, what you're doing every day, you know, it, it says a lot and why you're doing it, um, not only for your, you know, either for my wife or my kids, you know, you know, for my parents, for my, my siblings, you know, everything reflects off why you're doing this and you want to make everyone proud, including yourself, but, you know, family's there and family's there to support you uh, through the good and bad and, you know, you want to show your love and, and, and you want to show them that you're doing this for a reason and you're doing good things, not only for your family, but you're for your community. So family, kids, wife, etc. I think everything's for them. 
Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. My what I'm in love with now is a strong partnership um, with my boyfriend, Team Ro Kaim. <laughs> um because i i and and as you know joseph i am busy and making moves in a million different places right and so having him being my backbone especially doing a lot of the volunteer um extra t activities at the back end and having him supporting having him support me through and through thick and thin um having that keeps me sane and keeps me going and he fosters what I believe in. And so that's what, you know, definitely am in love with right now. Um, Cause I do need, I need that extra support and that partnership because I am busy all the time. And so without his support, I probably would go crazy. <laughs> um, well, like I said, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for y'all taking the time out of your day to do this. Um, it's really important that, um, that not only us, but people like us continue to talk about the great work that they're doing and why they do it, why they're driven to do it. You know, passion seems to be the theme uh, throughout our conversation today. Just the, it's something that drives you um, and, and family partnerships, uh, boyfriends, daughters you know those are the things that that support us that that, that drive us um and so yeah i'm, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm i'm very grateful and um grateful for your time uh excited about potential partnerships and um i really wish that uh yeah tw I, I hope the 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 start of 2021 is um yeah is we'll say healthy we'll say yeah. <laughs> the start of 2021 is healthy for y'all and um yeah remember to give this is i guess the mental health side of me remember to give yourself a break i know you know i'm hearing i, I know cat <laughs> you run like crazy i'm hearing everyone talk about their their families and 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 daughters wives um it can be hard to to take a break for yourself and give yourself you know what i mean that that um that me time and it's, uh, I think it's really important. So yeah, I'll, 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 end, I'll end on that. Um, and, uh, Thank you for your time. Yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk soon um, and maybe we'll do this again. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. See you guys.